Welcome to Desert Island Geek. Each episode, we welcome one self-confessed geek to our deserted island. But there's a catch. They may bring five, and only five, of their most essential geek items they simply cannot live without. Welcome once again to Desert Island Geek. This week we have Mr. Paul Parkinson. Now, Paul sells corporate treasury software to banks and major corporations in the UK and abroad. And that's a job that takes him uh, out and about and travelling quite a bit. He has a podcast. Uh, He has several podcasts, actually, but his main one is called uh, This Week in London. He's been married to Janet for 17 years and has... Two kids, Christopher 12 and James 14, and he lives in Sidcup in Kent. Uh, Paul, hello. Welcome to the island. Um, well, I would like to say I'm very pleased to be here, but uh, it's a desert island, isn't it? So hmm, am I really that pleased to be on a desert island? <laughs> I think I think with all the sun, I think considering we're having in the UK, we're having uh, the most wonderful wet summer right now. I think you should be grateful of a little bit of sunbathing and relaxing and getting away from it all. Uh, it sounds sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, as you as you know, there are certain criteria for being uh, permitted to live on the island. You are allowed a certain number of items. The first one being a website. So, what website have you chosen? This was the probably the hardest one of all. Actually, um, you, know, you sit there and you think, which one website? Or you know, I've got to try and be sensible as well. I've got to try and survive on this island. So I was looking around. I was going down my favourites on Firefox and said, Do, you know, could I live without that? Yep. Could I live without that? Yep. Could I live without that? Well, yeah, actually, I could live without all of them. So what I'd really like to do is rather than in, you know take some sort of information site or you know, uh, a social network or something like that with me. I'm just going to drop that and actually take an additional gadget if that works for you. Um, am I allowed to do that or do I have to choose one website? Um, okay, well, maybe we can discuss that, the the actual deal when we get to the gadget bit. But uh, just give me an idea. I mean, I mean, you probably floated the idea of a website. So very, very yeah. briefly, which one, which which website did you sort of half half think about and then decide to drop? Um, well, I was, I really, really <laughs> this is so hard. Uh, yeah, there's three that I, I visit on a regular basis. There's Boing Boing, there's um, Wikipedia, and there's Dig. Um, and I'd probably go with Wikipedia. Okay, well, that that's a fairly safe bet, I have to say. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> if you've got, yeah, well, you know, I'm a fairly safe, safe pair of hands. The the reason I go with Wikipedia is that you're on an island, you've got to survive, and you need information. So you can, okay, is this plant edible? Um, is that animal going to kill me? Um, okay, I'm not suggesting I'll be wandering around the jungle with a laptop on, on, in my hand saying, um, pointing the camera at it, trying to get it to identify which animal it is. But, uh, yeah, I, I do, I'll tell you what I do. I do spend far too much time in Wikipedia. Um, I just do random links, and you can just, Go to Wikipedia, type in something that intrigues you, and then just follow the links and see where you end up. So, uh, yeah, I quite like. I actually enjoy Wikipedia. So, I mean, I suspect the uh, the most common page you're going to actually end up on is the Ray Mears page. In that case, for, for those of you that don't know, that listening, Ray Mears is a uh, survival uh, expert in the UK on on television, done a number of survival kind of uh, programs and living in the wild. So, presumably, that would be a place you'll be stopping off quite regularly. I would rather suspect it might be. Yeah, I didn't know you had a page on Wikipedia. Let me check that. Click, click, click. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just assuming. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I haven't looked. I guarantee you. There, there's going to be, you know, um, edible fungi type pages on there, aren't there? So you stand a half decent chance of actually surviving. Um, you know, what do I? How do I? How do I make this water drinkable? How do I make sure? You know, blah 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 blah. But you know, you could spend a lot of time searching for one site. And I think Wikipedia, yeah, sure, it's a safe pair of hands and I might get accused of being a bit dull. I mean, I could have chosen, you know, any number of racy, um, interesting sites. But uh, safe pair of hands, I think, for this. I'll let other people get racy. At least I'll be able to get off the island in one piece. Okay. Wikipedia. Okay, so Wikipedia. But, of course, that's that's what you're actually trading in. So I just wanted to sort of understand what you were losing in, in exchange for for whatever gadget you, you're going to have. So the second item you're allowed to uh, to bring in with you, and, of course, we don't on this program question at all the um, – 
the boundaries posed by whatever technology we have in receiving all this various technology <laughs> on a deserted island. But uh, you, you're allowed to have a podcast. What podcast would that be? Uh, that's easy. That was uh, This Week in Tech. Um, I, 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 when, when I did the list, I, I wrote down three or four different names. There was, you know, Daily Source Code, obviously, Digital Flotsam, because I like uh, P.W. Fenton's um, storytelling capability, and I think he'd probably keep me sane. Um, but I, I think if I... If I chose um, digital flops, I'm going to get a very narrow view of one man's view of the world. But I think if I take this week in tech, I'll have a huge range of people to actually tell me what's going on, tell me what I'm missing. So at least when I do come back, I'll know what the heck's been going on. Um, I like Leo Laporte's voice. I think he's got a very good presentation. The, the, the subject matter experts he has on are just stunning. You know, John C. Dvorak and, uh, you know, Dvorak.org slash blog. Um, yeah, Will Harris, yeah, okay, and you know, all the other folks he has on. I just enjoy it. It's a great listen every week. So that was the easiest one, This Week in Tech. So that will, that will cover you for all the technology. Do, do you think that uh, listening to everything that's going on in the rest of the world as regards technology, you're going to feel a little isolated when you actually hear this 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 stuff that's really out of reach there? Or, or does it is it really going to still make you feel as though you're still connected to everybody? Yeah, uh, it, it's a hard call because... Yeah, you'll hear about some new gadget that's just been released, and uh, you know Dvorak saying, "Oh, come on, give me a break," and Leo saying, "No, I really love it. I really love it." And yeah, you'll be out of it because you only have access to you know one podcast, one website. So yeah, it's quite possible. But at least I'll know that there's still people out there, and I'll know what's going on. So yeah, tough call again, but uh, I, I, I stick with uh, this week in tech. This week in tech. Cool. So, I mean, we've decided that the, the best way to receive these are actually in coconuts. And uh, we're not entirely sure how that's going to work yet. So you can catch the coconut and inside is the latest episode. You see, I, I think we should go with some kind of eco technology rather than anything else. What do you think? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, how, if you just have some sort of coconut based broadband system, then, of course, you open up the uh, the interweb to the to the islander. Um, and they, they might cheat and go for a different website as well as a different podcast. But if you have each of these embedded in in the uh, in the fur around the outside of the podcast uh, the, uh, the, of the coconut, you know maybe they have to scratch it in a certain audio and, and bite by bite transfer it into their laptop. That might work too. Now I'm really intrigued because you because re- it's almost as though you really thought about that. I hadn't actually gone that that sophisticated into the uh, in, into sort of any consideration about how it might actually work. I was just sort of being sort of fairly uh, random with with a coconut. But I'm really intrigued as to the fact you 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 latched onto that and thought, hey, we can have some kind of embedding into the into the fur oh, yeah. around the no, coconut. No, no, no. That's it, it's excellent. Obvious. It's obvious. You know, it, the trouble is, you know, coconut takes about a year to grow, so the, the coconut has to have some sort of time traveling capability to be able to, when it first starts growing, leap forward in time listen to twit number 105 or whatever it is and then format themselves to a certain um style of bits and bytes that they're going to have to be able to grow into that shape and then i'll be able to scratch off it and then transfer it into the laptop or i could just get a pigeon with a memory stick on it well i think i think uh, one of your tasks to uh, you know beyond catching your food uh, making your shelter and um trying to keep the fire going is most certainly going to be improving the level of technology and reception of technology on the island. So I think you've got a, a definite task there to keep you busy. I think that'll be a lot of fun. A challenge for us all, for all of us islanders. So a uh, very important thing is a little bit of entertainment as well. You're allowed to bring one music track with you, and in the best spirit of podcasting, of course, it has to be a Podsafe music track. What track would you bring? This was the easiest, um, I think, uh, choice I had to make. I mean... I really, really like Black Lab, and the the one track that's that just sticks in my mind all the time is Ecstasy by Black Lab. Uh, yeah, I just you know, the the band just do it for me. You know, they've got the right sort of blend of harmony, um, rock, and um, musical skill, and I don't know delivery. I suppose uh, I'd love to go and see them live. It's just that they don't come over here, and I don't go over there. Um, but yeah, Black Lab, Ecstasy. It's just a perfect track. I, mean, I, I thought about all the other bands I could choose from, you know, Amplifico, um, as, as well as Black Lab, Amplifico, um, Craig David, um, 
you know, oh, there's just loads of them, Three Blind Mice, Simon Apple, people like that who really enjoy the music of. But it just kept coming back and back and back to Black Lab and then it was which track and then Ecstasy was the obvious choice. <laughs> To yourself, mind like a switchblade Heart doubled over in pain You let your body overflow Hide your instinct good and deep As the world just goes to hell Throw my clothes out in the street Hang me on your wall, yeah So there we have it, Ecstasy by Black Lab. And you're absolutely sure that's that's the track for you? That's the one that's going to keep you ent- thoroughly entertained for potentially oh, yes. however long no, no, you're going to spend here? Black, Black Lab and Ecstasy, good track. Um, no, that that's the one for me. The trouble is, you know, I've got so much music at home that uh, I, I would actually probably just go crazy through lack of the lack of music, thinking about it. You know, I, I'm not allowed to buy any more CDs because we've run out of space. Um, so... I'm concentrating on MP3s and the Podsafe stuff, and there's even so much good stuff in Podsafe out there now. You know, there's so many good networks building up of Podsafe music. 
Uh, it's just crazy. Yes, it, it is a viable alternative for, for listening choice now because the quality is going up and I think you know, it, it, very much the bars, bars have been, been raised, I think, over the last uh, year and a half to two years to, to the point where I think most of us have specific um, sections of our library which, uh, which are pod safe music and unsigned music. I absolutely agree with you. It's come on in leaps and bounds, so much good stuff. And I think it's testament probably to the power of the PodSafe distribution mechanism, whoever does it. I mean, I know Podshow have a huge lead in it and they have a fantastic number of artists, but there are more and more, if you like, mainstream artists coming on board. In my last This Week in London show, um, I, I must admit I copied Adam and I played a Howard Jones track and it was the, um, and then I just stuffed in another one because... The music was so good, and there are more and more and more great mainstream artists coming on. I think I saw Led Zeppelin were up there now with a with a track. Um, fabulous. So by the time you actually return from the island, do you think we could be seeing a very, very different music industry? Oh, I mean, we're talking generally now. Yeah, I think absolutely right. The The music industry is is on its back foot for, def, you know, for sure, um, I, I think it may even be on its last legs in certain areas. You know, more and more mergers and acquisitions are being announced, which is always a sign of a, of a very sick industry. Um, you can see that in the car industry, you know, General Motors and people like that just buying each other up for divesting itself of stuff that doesn't work. You know, all this activity is just a sign of a sick industry. And I think it's exactly the same in the music world. They're not well at all. So um, one industry which is doing extremely well right now of course is the publishing industry and you're allowed one book although it can also be a, an electronic book if that's what you what you would prefer so which book would you choose um my book is reach for the sky by paul brickhill it's a biography um not necessarily 100 percent accurate biography of douglas bard of the world war ii fighter pilot who lost both his legs in a in a flying accident in the early 1930s um, as a child, this was a, you know, as a child growing up, you know, less than 20 years after the war, I actually finished, I was you know, riveted by um, war stories and war films and that sort of thing. And I found this book, and it's one of those books that just driv- has just been with me for 40 years. And it's just a story that I adore. I keep buying copies of the book because I keep wearing them out. Um, it was a toss-up, actually, between this book and Dune. I've actually worn out more copies of Dune than I have um, Reach for the Sky. But I figured if I'm on an island, I want something that's going to cheer me up and give me the motivation to carry on. So I chose Reach for the Sky by Paul Brickhill, an a biography of Douglas Bader. So what element is it that, that really inspires you? I mean, obviously, the, the, the guy loses his legs. And if I remember correctly, because it's been a while since I, I think I've, I've seen the movie and read the book years ago, uh, he continues to fly, doesn't he, with, uh, with false legs? That's right. I mean, he, he gets um, turned out of the RAF because there's no rules which allow him to carry on flying. You know, there's, there's no rule that says you can carry on flying. Um, you know, and then the war started, and he got back into the RAF. I think in 1941 or something like that, and he just carried on flying. And then, you know, uh, interesting thing I was just reading again on, on Wikipedia um, the other day that they reckon that he was so successful because he was able to turn faster in his uh, Spitfire than any of the German pilots because he could actually pull more G without passing out because he had no legs. There was nowhere for the blood to go to. So the blood stayed in the upper part of his body rather than draining to his legs. So he could actually turn faster without blacking out or graying out. Now, that makes a lot of sense. That makes an awful lot of sense to me because that's one of the, the biggest issues with regards to uh, pilots in those kind of situations is that the G-forces push the blood into the legs, if I remember correctly. And don't, and don't these days, they tend to have these inflatable pads on their legs or something to increase yeah, they, pressure? Yeah, they're called G-suits. Yeah, G-suits to try and keep the blood up the uh, top half of the body. Um, but it, yeah, you can just imagine, you know, nowadays they're doing 500 miles an hour. He would have been doing 250, 300 miles an hour. But w- without a, the benefit of a G-suit, without too much in the way of a um, pressurised cabin or anything like that. And, and clearly people trying to shoot him down as well. Wow. So just an amazing story. And you, you read about the accident. You read about his fights internally with um, people in authority. You read about his fights against uh, 
um, you know, the Germans in, when he got transferred to Colditz and the, the reasons for that. And it's just one of those stories that's very uplifting and very uh, and very positive, which I think I'll probably need on the island. So, I mean, his character, um, he'd have to be a very strong character, probably quite arrogant and stubborn, I think, to actually sort of fight against all these things. I mean, the, there's the uplifting side of the story, but how do you feel about his personality as, as, as a person? Do you think that it's down to his his mental attitude to what he went through that was really uh, the key to his success and fighting back and being successful back into a plane and so on and surviving. Uh, uh, yeah, probably all of the above, really. He Reading the book, you know, he, there have been documentaries on, on the TV over here about you know, what Douglas Bader was really like and how he was different to the story painted in the film. Um, you know, he was a bit of a nasty piece of work, apparently, in real life. But according to the book and the film, it was one of those things he just wouldn't give up, never give up, never surrender, get on with it, push forward, push forward, push forward. And I, th I think the bit they miss out in the film is that while he was pushing forward, there might have been people in his way. <laughs> so rather than go round them or work with them, he just rolled straight over them. Um, but, you know, it was, a, it was a great book and a great film and a very positive message for me as I was growing up. Um, and I think it would be on the island as well. Excellent. Terrific. Uh, very inspiring book there. So we have one category left, and you've actually opted because you want two gadgets rather than just one because you're quite happy to drop your access to Wikipedia in preference for two gadgets. So what's your first gadget that you would like to bring onto the island? Um, again, rather practical choice. I'd go for my Leatherman Super Tool. Um, I've got one of these Leatherman gadgets, which has got, you know, it's like a, um, a pen knife on steroids, I think is probably the best way to put it, and you know, with a saw and a knife and a spike and all those other things. I think that might come in handy on the island. So how does that compare to something like a, uh, a classic Swiss army knife? Oh, I think it's it, it's way stronger for a start. The whole thing is a much heftier item. Um, you know, the, the standard Victorian Ox Swiss army knife is is a good instrument. It's a very accurate tool. But I think it's um, the Leatherman just has more going for it in terms of strength, durability, robustness, and um, usefulness. So, do you think you're going to go to be able to use it to, uh, you know, catch food, for example? I mean, how how could you utilize it in some of the the less direct ways? Do you think? Okay, um, let's do a for instance straight out of the Ray Mears book of um, how to do things. Um, you'd need to catch food, so you'd find a um, a burrow or something, and you'd be able to think, okay, there's something down there I want to catch. You'd cut a vine. You'd uh, probably knot it in in a certain way, which you'd find from Wikipedia. And then uh, you'd be able to use the knife to make um, to make the vine. Uh, you know, I don't have the information in front of me, but you'd you'd cut the vine, you'd process the vine, you'd knot the vine, you'd turn it into a, into a, a throttling trap thing, a garroting thing, put it in the ground, use the knife to cut a stick to put the to connect it to the ground, and then your job done, really. And once you've caught the little furry animal, you'd use the knife to skin it, cut it up, and uh, and eat it. Now, you see, that gives me the distinct impression that even without Wikipedia access, you stand a damn good chance of actually surviving on your own on the island. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, pra practical things, I'd probably be all right, but I, you know, I, I'd probably go nuts before I got rescued. I'd probably lose the plot completely because I do like being with people, um, sure, sometimes I like to be on my own and I take myself off and do that, but the vast majority of the time I'm very much a people person. And so being on my own for days, weeks, months, even years, you know, might have a, a somewhat negative impact on my mental stability. And so that that will be your biggest challenge. And maybe that's where uh, the inspiration from um, uh, Reach for the Sky might actually work. Although, of course, he was fighting against other people. You're going to be fighting against yourself, perhaps. I'm fighting against my inner demons. Absolutely. Now you wanted to, you wanted a second gadget. Yeah. Well, you see, you've got to cut loose sometimes, and I think um, this would probably have a dual benefit. One is you'd have a bit of fun with it, and it also might be useful as some sort of signalling system as well at some point. So I'm thinking about a kite. Um, you could actually have a kite flying, and uh, but my, my son has got one of these. And it's such a lot of fun to play with. It's the FlexiFoil Stacker system, and I'd go for the larger one, the Stacker 8, and, and just have a lot of fun with a kite. Well, it would keep you fit too, wouldn't it? 
Well, as you know, I'll probably need a bit of assistance on the keeping fit front as well. But I don't think that would be a problem because I won't be eating that much on the island and my biggest problem is eating. I'm not the world's biggest drinker. Um, I just eat too much. That's why I turn into a Mr Blobby every so often. So with any luck, that might actually, the island may actually solve that because you're going to be fairly active keeping yourself uh, self alive, I think, effectively. Yeah. No, no, Janet was right up for me coming onto the island, I tell you. And she said, well, you know, you, you'd be there, you wouldn't be able to eat so much, you'd have lots to do, you'd be you get yourself fit fairly quickly, so off you go. You know, she's almost at the door waving me off and you know, saying, oh, is it only on a podcast? Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little, a little insight into the uh, the Parkinson household there for a second. Now, now simply because you've gone for a, a second gadget, which which is really, uh, it's really a great deal of fun, I think. Not just, you know, you've, you've found a practical uh, sort of thing about it. It's, it, it, it's going to act as a, a signaling device. But it's going to be a great deal of fun for you as well. It's going to help that periods where you are battling those inner demons because maybe you can battle the, uh, the the kite and the winds, which will be quite significant as well as, as the demons. So I'm actually really inclined, and because Wikipedia is kind of a default one, I'm inclined to say, okay, you can trade in the Wikipedia for the uh, Flexifoil stack and kite system. Thank you very much. Are you absolutely sure now? Is this this is the last time you, you you won't get a second choice? Are you absolutely sure? Well, I mean, are we allowed one? I mean, are we allowed one book? You know, in in in, an, in another place, you're allowed, you know, the works of Shakespeare and the Bible. Are we allowed one um, uh, website as a default standard? Well, we're entirely we're entirely neutral on anything like that. So no. Oh. <laughs> but no fun. Um, oh, oh, no, we're, we're, we're we're not sort of uh, pussyfooting around around here. This is this is hardcore survival stuff on this particular island. So well, you see, they're, they're, you're leading me one. You're leading me down one particular track there. So if it's hardcore survival, then having something like Wikipedia available would be a in inverted commas a good thing. But the the the, the fun the fun loving lunatic inside me says, well, it'll be, wouldn't it be fun to have a big kite to fly around. So I'm actually going to go for the kite. Okay, so you're happy then that um, every so often you're going to be quite sick trying out different fruits and vegetables no, that may no. not necessarily be poison. Oh, you are a bad <laughs> man, you are. <laughs> um, yeah, but I could eat things, couldn't I? I could eat, uh, I could certainly eat animals. They probably wouldn't do me too much damage. You're, you're a bad man. You know that. You're making me think again about this. Okay. So yeah. So your fi- your final choice. This is this is final the one answer. you're going to get stuck with. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to go with the kite. You're going with the kite. I'm going with Excellent. The kite. Well, all I can say is uh, welcome to the island and thank you, Paul, for your time. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this little chat about the potential of being stuck away from from technology, but still having a just a tentative. Uh, attachment to it it's been a lot of fun actually yeah it's going to be uh it's going to be an interesting time however long i spend on the island so uh, i think i've got a good range of stuff that will keep me going keep me alive and keep me sane terrific uh paul parkinson uh, thank you very much my pleasure that was desert island geek this program was produced and presented by neil dixon To get yourself in touch with the show if you want to take part, have a comment, or want to suggest a geek for a future episode, drop us an email, customs at desertislandgeek.com. The best and the brightest, served up daily by the sharpest minds in content delivery, Podshow and Limelight.